you're watching Block Star, this is Mark Echo. Check out Getting Up, Contact Under Pressure, out now. Also, Peep Complex Magazine, bro. Sorry for the competition. We're a magazine or video, so it's not really competition. Peace. The nickname Echo comes from the fact that I am a twin. I have a twin sister who's one of my business partners, actually. My mother did know in 1972 when she was given, about to give birth to us, she was carrying twins. Just didn't know, I don't know, the technology, whatever, what limitations, but she could, and complained about kicking under her left breast and then kicking in the lower part of her stomach, and the doctor said, oh, it's impossible, it's just an echo in the fluid, and then five minutes after my sister Marcy was born, I was born, and that was a nickname, which happened to, at a time, it come, let's go back to 83, when you're looking for like a graffiti tag, um, that nickname became purposeful. Um, the rhino was like an effort to try to come up with something other than just a graffiti mark as a logo. So, so many brands in the competitive space were just using graffiti tags as a word mark. And I was at a trade show and I realized like what defined me from the rest of those brands were all kind of communicating the same, you know, brand co communication. And that's when I started to go on the hunt for a mascot. Went to my parents' house where I grew up, where I started airbrushing way back in the 80s. Um, and my dad had a collection of these sand drift wood rhinos. I just started riffing off of it and, you know, the kind of ruggedness, the, the you know, the fact that it has a clumsy poise about it, the rhino. It's the only four-legged animal that, you know, doesn't walk backwards. All those things made for a great logo. And um, it's just one of those things, uh, you know, that happens in... In, in your life professionally where you're handed something from the heavens and the and uh, you just it's like having a child just grateful and the rhino's been my best employee and uh, I try to take care of her. When I uh, the first time I met Jay Z years ago, I was like, how'd you do it? I said six million dollars in debt. Coming back from six million dollars in debt. The comeback is what made me do it. Alright. The one thing people never quantify when they talk about that when once they reach the doors of success. Mm -hmm. And it's often they become blinded because they become they start believing in their own shit or they're on their own hype. Uh -huh. Is they don't quantify the X equals what value of luck. Timing. You know, my my words of advice are to anyone who's entrepreneurial that, that you know believes that they have something unique to bring to the market or to the world is just to uh, stick to it um, and you know the one thing that can never be taken away from you despite uh, success or failure is your belief in yourself um, that said don't be emotional about your work you know be honest about your work be, don't be too proud to hear things that sometimes hurt that are going to only make you better professionally. The greatest problem with young people when they get into business, even for me when I started in 1920, was uh, managing my emotions and not getting sidetracked by what this person said or when I didn't get what I needed or thought I needed and, you know, having to kind of manage that um, you, so it doesn't get in the way of what's doing the right thing by the business. Remember. To be in business, you have to be about business, and to be about business isn't about like trying to get laid or doing a vanity play. You know, you have to. True success comes from what happens at the cash register, and uh, I'm proud to be able to to make those dreams come true and create a fertile soil for 800 plus creative people around the world to you know rally behind me every day. So it's a blessing, you know, from the magazine to all the brands to the game.